will now discuss several terms used in conjunction with control valves. One such term is cavitation. Cavitation is a formation and subsequent collapse of bubbles or voids in a liquid system. Cavitation occurs in a control valve due to the pressure drop and pressure recovery inside the valve. The pressure drop causes the liquid to accelerate. The liquid pressure lowers and vaporization begins, thus forming vapor bubbles. The liquid then decelerates, the pressure builds back up, and the bubbles suddenly collapse, causing implosions. A cavitating control valve sounds like it has gravel flowing through it. Cavitation is likely to occur in applications where a high pressure drop across the control valve is present. Cavitation can severely damage control valve trim. So special trim designs are available that will reduce the harmful effects of cavitation. Fisher Cavitrol trim, which is basically a cage type trim, is one such special trim type. The fluid flows through small holes in the plug. The fluid reaches maximum velocity. Voids or bubbles form in this area. Then the fluid enters the hollow plug area. Velocity rapidly decreases in the hollow area of the plug. Pressure is recovered, causing the bubbles and voids to implode. Since the implosions are inside the hollow plug, no damage is sustained to the trim. Flow coefficient, or C dash sub V, parentheses CV, is the yardstick for valve sizing. CV is the amount of fluid that will flow through a fully open valve for a given pressure drop across the valve. A C dash sub dash V of one means one gallon per minute of water will flow through a fully open valve that has a one PSI pressure drop across it. Rangeability refers to the minimum and maximum amounts of flow a valve can control effectively. Rangeability is related to C dash sub dash V trim characteristic and process conditions. Sometimes a control valve has to stay open or closed most of the time in an effort to control the process. This may indicate a valve malfunction, but often it means the valve is being used out of its effective controlling range. Now, work exercise four in your workbook. Packing and lubrication is our next topic. Packing comes in a variety of configurations and materials. Configurations include split ring, V-ring, rope, and stick types. Split ring, rope, and stick packing can be added to the control valve box without removing the actuator or stem. The addition of V-ring packing necessitates removing the valve stem or actuator. V-ring packing is an excellent high-pressure packing. Pressure tends to make the V-rings expand, so the packing gets tighter. Packing materials vary according to services. Teflon impregnated asbestos or graphite is widely used. This type of packing is self-lubricating. Any packing that contains Teflon has a maximum operating temperature limit of approximately 450 degrees Fahrenheit. The 450 degrees Fahrenheit temperature limit is packing temperature limit, not the process fluid temperature limit. 
A fend or extension bonnet can be used to cool the packing to below 450 degrees Fahrenheit, even if the process is much hotter. Graph oil is another multi-purpose packing. It is an all-graphite material that requires no lubrication. Graph oil can tolerate temperatures in excess of 1,200 degrees Fahrenheit. Severe services such as hydrogen, acid, caustic, or extreme pressure require special packing and lubricants. When you encounter a special service or packing problem, request assistance from your supervisor, the responsible engineer, or the valve manufacturer's local service representative. Packing and lubricants can be ordered from a valve manufacturer or a supplier. Refer to a parts book for the part number of the packing you need. What is the part number for 2-inch valve packing? The number is 79-28529. If you didn't have the parts book, you could obtain the proper packing by giving the supplier the following information. Valve size, valve stem diameter, packing box depth and diameter, process conditions, and the serial number of the valve. Lubricants and packing other than those of a specific valve manufacturer can be used. Rutherford Slick Stuff is currently being used at Baytown and Baton Rouge plants. This packing is a Teflon base, self-forming material that can withstand 600 degrees Fahrenheit temperature. A conventional Teflon graphite packing ring is used for the first and last rounds of packing when you pack a control valve with Slick Stuff. Rutherford Slick Stuff requires no lubrication. But Rutherford No. 4 lubricant is an excellent packing lubricant and will prolong the life of any packing. The Rutherford lubricant is a Teflon-based paste that actually forms a packing. It can be installed in a valve by using a Zerk fitting and a grease gun. At Baytown plants, this lubricant has been pumped into leaking valves and prevented valve or unit downtimes. Now, work exercise 5 in your workbook. Actuators provide the power to operate the valve. They vary in appearance, design, and operation. We will discuss the two most prominent types of actuators the pneumatic spring-opposed diaphragm type, and the pneumatically operated piston type, commonly called a piston operator. The more common actuator is the pneumatic spring-opposed diaphragm type. Locate these parts. Actuator stem lock nuts, actuator stem, diaphragm, diaphragm plate, diaphragm washer. Also, locate the upper diaphragm case, lower diaphragm case, diaphragm case cap screw, diaphragm case nuts, yoke. And locate the actuator spring, actuator stem, spring button, travel indicator scale. The spring-opposed diaphragm actuator is simple and rugged. Therefore, it requires little maintenance. It doesn't need a source of air supply. The spring-opposed diaphragm has some shortcomings. It has hysteresis, or non-repeatability. The time that it takes the actuator to travel from minimum to maximum stroke is relatively long. Its total stroke is relatively short. The actuator operates as follows. The pneumatic signal, 
usually from 3 to 15 pounds, enters the upper diaphragm case. It forces the diaphragm down, opposing the spring. The actuator will move until the pressure on the diaphragm and the spring force are equal. If signal air is bled from the actuator, the spring will force the diaphragm upward. The actuator spring is calibrated. If the stroke of the actuator is 2 inches, the spring is designed so 3 to 15 psi on the diaphragm results in 0 to 2 inches of actuator movement. The adjusting screw determines the starting point of the actuator. If the actuator spring tension is increased, it will take more air pressure, 4 psi for instance, to start moving the stem. A direct acting spring opposed diaphragm actuator extends the stem when the signal increases. An indirect type withdraws the stem as the signal increases. Now, work exercise 6 in your workbook. This is a balance valve actuator. It is similar to the spring opposed diaphragm type with one exception. Can you see the major difference? There is no actuator spring in the balance valve actuator. There is also another difference. It is in the valve portion. Can you detect it? The valve has no packing. This balance valve actuator has a double diaphragm as a safety feature. The parts to the actuator are lower diaphragm, upper diaphragm, plug stem. These parts are the adapter, upper diaphragm plates, lower diaphragm plates. The balance valve is used on low pressure gas applications. In this specific example, the downstream pressure of the fuel gas opposes the instrument's signal. The instrument that signals the valve does not establish a direct valve position. It establishes an equal downstream pressure. The downstream pressure is analogous to the actuator in the spring opposed diaphragm actuator. Assume the input is 9 psi. Any downstream pressure variation that occurs will be sensed by the diaphragm and the actuator will automatically reposition the valve to maintain 9 psi downstream gas pressure. The camflex actuator is a variation of the basic spring opposed diaphragm type. The camflex uses a rolling diaphragm the rolling diaphragm permits long actuator strokes up to 7 inches. The nylon guide is not a seal. It helps align the floating piston. Now, work exercise 7 in your workbook. Pneumatically operating piston operators are also a very common type of control valve actuator. This is a Fisher 480 actuator. This is a Conoflow Conomotor actuator. Here is an Annan piston operator. And this is a Valtex piston type actuator. As compared to a spring-opposed diaphragm actuator, piston operators offer these advantages. One, more power than spring-opposed diaphragm actuators. Piston operators can actuate both single-seated and butterfly valves 
which the spring-opposed diaphragm actuator cannot. 2. Greater stroking speed. 3. Eliminates hysteresis. 4. Longer strokes. And 5. Compact. Piston operators can be split-ranged. The term split-ranged means dividing the input signal between two or more control valves. This is an example of split-ranging. Valve A will open from 3 to 9 PSI. Valve B will open from 9 to 15 PSI. This dual valve installation, one small valve and one large valve, permits great rangeability. A disadvantage in using a piston operator is the need for a source of air supply. This can become a problem in remote locations. In addition, fail-safe capability of a piston operator requires additional hardware, such as these volume tanks. Now, work exercise 8 in your workbook.